everyone, Brightbone here. Today, we're gonna do some multi-factor phishing. Specifically, we're gonna check out Evil Jinx 3, or Evil Gen X 3. This is the newest version. Uh, what you guys have seen probably in some of my previous videos, you saw the combination of Evil Go Fish. It was a project called Evil Go Fish. Today, we're going to use Evil Gen X 3 and the supported version of GoFish that Kuba Gretzky released. So he released a supported version of GoFish, and here it is. See, it's Kuba Gretzky's own GoFish. And what this does is allow us to put the lures right into GoFish. So it's a supported plugin. Now, you don't you no longer have to do you know magic or use third-party projects or, or work your way in or, or try to hammer the lures into the HTML templates. It's all done automatically for you with Evil Gen X3 and this version of GoFish. So I have these stood up and we're gonna try some multi-factor phishing today to see, does it still work in 2024? All right, over here, I have my first Amazon EC2 instance. I typically like to stand these up in cloud, whether it be a droplet, whether it be Amazon EC2, someplace. You wanna stand this infrastructure up and burn it down when you're done because it's gonna get on a bunch of block lists, you're gonna get spam caught. It, it, you just spin up and spin down in cloud. It's the best bet if you're gonna do multi-factor phishing. So right here, I have GoFish and I'm in the GoFish directory. I've already compiled this. You install Go, you type Go build, and then it will install this. There's also some scripts out there that will install GoFish for you. But in this case, if I ls here, you can see this is just typical GoFish, and there's my GoFish executable. So I'm gonna do sudo slash GoFish. And we now have a server admin starting. Now notice I have this at 0000 on port 3333. I have allowed this not to be 127.0.0.1, which it is by default, because I want to be able to access this remotely. If you're in cloud, that's your best bet. That way you can track your campaigns. Now, if I come over here and I do refresh, it's gonna have me sign in. Uh, so the username, admin, let me get my password over here. And Max will recorrect your A to an A. You don't want that, make sure that it's lowercase. And we'll go sign in, and immediately here we have our GoFish dashboard. Now I have created an email template using Amazon Says. Uh, this is actually this is my email template for my Outlook uh, fish. The fish looks like somebody had an email rejected from Outlook, and they can click on that. The landing pages. I don't have any landing pages here because their landing page is going to be Evil Jinx three or Evil Gen X three. Our sending profile, I'm using Amazon Says, which is simple email service, just to send the emails that I need. Now you can use anything here. You can use Mailgun, you can use SendGrid, whatever you choose. However you're gonna send these fish out, you can set up your sending profile. I just found in this case, because it was a limited test, that using uh, SES was easiest. Now, one thing you want to make sure you have when you're setting up this version of GoFish with Evil Gen X3, is you want to make sure you have your API key, right? And yes, I have changed well, I've changed the API key since you are viewing this video, but this API key needs to be integrated with GoFish or with uh, Evil Gen X3. And I'll show you exactly where you put that here in a minute. But pretty standard GoFish setup. If you're familiar with GoFish, this looks basically the same as normal. The only difference is when you create a campaign, there's a specific area where you will put your lure and I'll show you that here in a minute. So we have GoFish going. Let's get Evil Gen X3 going. So I have Evil Gen X3 over here. Same typical Evil Gen X3. I've compiled it. As you can see, I just have Evil Gen X, fishlets and redirectors. I only have one fishlet in here and it's Microsoft 2024 because that's gonna be what we're fishing. So if I clear here and I will go Evil Gen X3. And we can see this is version 3.30. This is the newest version. I do have one fishlet in here, Microsoft 2024, and it's disabled. Now to enable the fishlet, you have to give it a host name. So we will go fishlets, and there's tab completion here, so you can do tab completion. Fishlets, then host name, 
Then I give it the name of the fishlet, which is Microsoft 2024, and then I give it the domain that I've registered. So in this case, I've registered Black Spire Security. This is just a domain I had lying around. So we've done that, right? We have registered our name to the fishlet. Now I need to enable the fishlet. So then I go fishlets and I'll go enable. And I can still do tab complete and Microsoft 2024. Now at this point, it's going to go try to register a bunch of certificates for this. The important thing to note here if you have not pointed your DNS at Evil Gen X3, it will fail. You need to point the domain that you've registered, the DNS, at Evil Gen X3 and make sure Evil Gen X3 has port 53 open. That way, it can register all these certificates for you. Now, of course, registering a certificate, it uses Let's Encrypt. That could be an IOC in some cases, so you may want to register your own certificates. You can do that now. You can register your own certificates. You put them in the folder inside Evil Gen X3, and then it will import those. That's a new feature of 3.3, one that was not there previously and kind of limited the usage of this. But Let's Encrypt still works. It's a valid certificate. Most users won't even notice. But if they do compare, they'll see a Let's Encrypt certificate on a Microsoft URL or something like that. So you want to be pretty careful there. Uh, it could be an IOC. Now, if you don't want to have that domain pointed at Evil Gen X3, I want control. You can register it with Cloudflare and then create all of the hosts that are necessary for your fishlet. Now, how do I get the hosts that are in my fishlet? Well, if you created the fishlet, you already know what the hosts are. But if you didn't create the fishlet, you can go fishlets, and then you go get hosts. And you got to give it, so we can do get hosts, fishlets, get hosts, and then you give it the name. And notice it gives me all of the ones that it will try to register. So simply creating a records for all of these in something like Cloudflare and pointing them back to Evil Gen X3, that works too. That's what I've done in this case, and it was able to successfully register all the Let's Encrypt certificates. I didn't have to manually import them. So that's something that you can do. Also, if you're in developer mode or you're developing a fishlet, you can do get hosts, and it will output the host that you would put in your host file, right? So just realize this is good for fishlet development. Okay, so we've got our fishlet. It is ready. It has certificates. Now what we need to do is create a lure. Now I've pre-created a lure here. If I go lures, I have Microsoft 2024, but if I go lures and I give it zero, I now have the configuration of that. Now I made this path look like login.microsoft.com. Another way that a user might identify this, right? And then it redirects to login.microsoft.com once they have successfully authenticated. So now I just quite simply take and get my URL and I put that in my campaign. So now if I go lures and I go zero, actually I need to do get URL and then zero, it will give me the lure type that I need here, all of the information for my lure. So now I go back to GoFish. We'll go to dashboard. We'll create a campaign. We're just going to go to campaign. We'll call it Spearfish. And we're going to use our template of rejected email. And notice I have this Evil Jinx lure URL. This is not in the standard GoFish library. So if you're going to use GoFish with Evil Gen X3, you can just do this version and just paste this in. And it automatically replaces your template variables with that. Now I'm going to do select group, target and I'm gonna launch this campaign. And we'll launch it. And this is gonna send an email to my HME 076686 that I registered at gmail.com, right? Now, the cool thing here is I will get statistics as I'm going through with this version of GoFish. That's what you want when you're doing a phishing campaign. You know, you're phishing hundreds of users. You wanna see who got where and when and who 
you know, clicked on it, who entered credentials, and so on and so forth. If we go back over here to Windows 10, I have the fish that just came in, right? I have, here it is, it came from me, it went to this person here, and it says quarantine email, right? And you could customize this subject all you want. You could customize all this. But quite simply, if I click on accept email deletion or deny email deletion, it's going to take me to Microsoft. Makes sense, right? It's from Outlook. User's not going to notice this. So we'll go accept email deletion. And here we are with our Microsoft login. And I'm going to do my login that I know it works. We'll do Brian Allman, yeah, Cheshire, Cheshire I'm going to go next. I'm going to go get my password. And this is a pretty long password. And just realize I am going to change this before I publish the video. So don't put a whole bunch of comments in there. Hey, you didn't change your password. So if I'm going to sign in now. Uh, I got the wrong one. Let's try this again. Yeah, there we go. That's the longer one. And it just simply redirects me. And if I'm a user, I'm not going to notice, okay? I'm gonna come over here now, and you can see I've got my phone. I'm going to go into the Authenticator app, and I'm going to hit Approve. There we go, I've hit Approve. It's now moving forward. And I can give it Stay Signed In or not. Doesn't matter at this point. We'll just go Yes, why not? Now, if I go back over here to my GoFish Admin Console, and I refresh, Go back to dashboards, we'll go back to campaigns. We can see our campaign is in progress, but if I view results now, I've got an email sent, an email open, a link clicked, and data submitted. Cool, huh? It just reaches out through the API. And I can show you what this looks like. If you go to config here from GoFish, here's the API key, here's the admin URL that I created. That's how that works, right? Very simple. We also, as you can see, have a session. So we have intercepted the multi-factor credentials of this user. So what do we do now? Well, we need to go to another host and import these credentials. Replaying the credentials doesn't really work too well from this because it, it is not what you would really expect, right? It, it doesn't work from here. So you're gonna want to go to a host to test this. So I have Hunter over here in my lab, and I have a fresh version of Firefox. You could do this with Chrome as well, but you're gonna want Cookie Editor, right? So I will go to login.microsoftonline.com. And notice it's gonna give me the sign-in. Well, I come back over here to Evil Gen X, and I go sessions, and I have a session. So I can choose either one of these. We'll choose session 14. So we'll go session 14, and that's because I told it to save. It did two sessions. It intercepted it twice. Sessions, not sessions. Sessions 14. Okay, so here's my username, and here is my password that I want to put in. And yes, I will be changing this before I publish this video. Come back over here to Hunter, paste in my password. Oh, well, my username first. And I go next. And it's gonna tell me enter the password. I'll paste that in just to verify. And now I'm not going to approve this sign-in request. The user will get prompted for a sign-in request. If they, if they approve it, great, you're in. But you don't have to do that. So what I'm gonna do now, come over here to Cookie Editor. I'm gonna kill all the cookies off. And then I'm gonna go to Import. And then I come back over here to Evil Gen X and I grab this cookie path. Grab this cookie path. And I come back over to here to my Hunter machine. I import this, paste it in, and import. And then I reload. Now, it's going to say, you can't do this, right? It's going to be like, wait a minute, can't do that. So I reload. 
But notice now it says signed in. It will ask me for the password one more time, which I can paste that in. We'll get the password. Come back over here to our Hunter machine, paste this in, and sign in. Stay signed in, doesn't matter, yes, no. But I am now in as this user. I've intercepted their multi-factor connection. And I'm in as this user. And you can see, I have logged in. So what does an adversary usually do at this point? They're going to go register a new multi-factor device. So one of the ways of detecting this is looking for a new multi-factor device being registered here because they don't want to go through this dance every time. And the session cookie might expire over a period of time. So they're going to go register a new device. But at this point, we have proven that multi-factor phishing works. Still, here in 2024. Now the hard thing here is defending against this. There really isn't much you can do. You can train your users to know what to look for. That's basically it. You can have rules that look for when a new multi-factor device is added to your accounts. Now I will warn you, that's going to be insanely loud in most organizations because users add and remove things all the time, right? They get new phones, they break their phone. Whenever they do something, they're gonna add a new multi-factor device. So maybe threat hunting for it, not real-time alerting, or if you have a big sock, you could do real-time alerting for it and they can investigate every one. But that's a lot of work. So overall, pretty successful here. Evil Jinx 3, pretty awesome. Works exactly like I'd expected to. Notice one thing, the repository is still called Evil Jinx 2. If you compile this direct, it still calls it Evil Jinx 2, even though it's Evil Jinx 3 um, or Evil Gen X 3. I, I always get that confused how you pronounce that. I know it's based on Engine X. Um, but regardless, 2024, we can still fish multi-factor. And that's all I have for you this week. Hack the planet to defend better.